Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Glendale Arena here in Glendale, Arizona for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Vlad Wharton's Millennium Events in association with Gary Shaw Productions, Ring Pros, Nemiroff, and Showtime. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the IBF, President Marion Muhammad, Supervisor Aaron Kaiser, along with the Arizona State Boxing Commission. The chairwoman is Mary Rose Wilcox, Commissioners Richard Saunders and Lionel Ruiz, and the Executive Director John Montano. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Robin McDougall and Dr. Charles Howard. Timekeeper at the bell, Martin Dominguez. Keeping count of the knockdowns, Bill Buck. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside. From Washington, D.C., Paul Artiste. From Phoenix, Arizona, Howard Ritchie. And from Lennox Head, New South Wales in Australia, John Wright. Now presenting our referee in charge of the action, working in this, his 77th world title bout, Raul Kais Sr. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, Live from Glendale, Arizona, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first the challenger on my left. He is fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing black and gold trunks fighting out of our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., by way of Tacoma Park, Maryland. He weighed in at the junior welterweight limit of 140 pounds even. His record stands at 55 wins, three losses with 31 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former WBA super lightweight world champion and the current interim IBF junior welterweight champion of the world, known as the little big man, introducing Chambé Mitchell. His record stands at 30 wins, only one defeat, one no decision with 24 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former undisputed world champion at 140 pounds, the current WBC super lightweight champion emeritus and the defending IBF junior welterweight champion of the world. Please welcome the thunder from down under, introducing Pascha Soon! Once again, our referee in charge, Raul Kais, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of championship boxing scheduled. gentlemen, I give you instructions downstairs. Remember, obey my commands at all times, and above all, protect yourselves at all times. Right here is fine. Keep your punches up. Good luck to both of you. Remember, here's fine. Let's go. This fight for more than just Sue's belt, it is for supremacy in boxing's best division, arguably. No matter the circumstances, the always supremely confident Kostyzu, a very strategic fighter who prepares meticulously for each opponent. He's had almost two years to think about what he's going to do tonight against Shambay Mitchell. 
Mitchell, meanwhile, single-minded in purpose. He has done nothing but get ready for this moment by staying extremely busy. The biggest difference for Mitchell entering this fight with Zhu as opposed to the first one, he now has two good wheels. He'll have to use those wheels plus a lot of head movement to avoid Zhu's power in activity or not. And early in this fight, uh, Costa Zhu is often a slow starter. In fact, Hugo Pineda, another lefty, had him down in the first round when they fought. Uh, Zab Judah controlled him early. So these early rounds are ones that Mitchell would like to get off to a good start in. And Costa Zhu do what Felix Trinidad did recently and look even better than he did previous to his comeback. Well, there were no knockdowns in the first fight, but several takedowns and throwdowns, a very rough and tumble affair that at times resembled an alley fight. A key factor here tonight could be the referee. Yeah, Raul Caiz Sr. And, he, and uh, Gary Shaw, the promoter for Sean Bay Mitchell, said he was going to remind Caiz several times in the dressing room and then when they got back out here in the arena about the fact that he has to watch Zoo roughhousing with Mitchell. So he wants that firmly implanted in his mind. More than once in the original affair, Zoo brought Mitchell down hard to the canvas, claiming he was being held and just trying to break loose. Mitchell differs, but also said he didn't blame Zhu. If the circumstances were reversed, said Shambay, he said he'd do the same thing, but he, doubt, he doubts it will happen again. Both men working on the inside. Shambay trying to kind of hold him so Zhu can't work. You know, the, the left shoulder of Zhu, which was repaired by surgery, Good left hand by Mitchell. We've seen Zhu use that left hook already three or four times, so clearly he may be telling us the truth when he said that shoulder's not bothering him. So the first effective punch thrown by Mitchell. Here in the rhythm. And there's that little hook on the inside by Zhu. On the inside, he's throwing that punch very, very well. That bodes well for him. Clash of heads there. Which is going to happen with a southpaw and a right-hander. We approach the final 30 seconds of the opening round. It's early in this fight, but Mitchell is allowing himself to be handled on the inside a little bit more than I think they would like by Costa Zoo. There's some blood from the bridge of the nose of Costa Zoo from the clash of heads. Wow. Right off the bat of the first round, it, it just surfaced. Blood, bridge of Costa Zoo's nose as the heads come together. And there's the bell for round one. They'll attend to that cut. Let's see if it's going into the eye. Charmbe Mitchell had his moments certainly in that first round, landing a good straight left hand as Zhu came in kind of square to him. And there you see Zhu using the left hook, uh, which he used effectively, and that's Mitchell with his head in position where it may have happened. Let's see the clash of heads. They come together, yeah. And really, Zhu created that as much as Mitchell did. So Costa Zhu got the worst of it, but he was stepping in, not intentionally, but it was his body weight coming forward that created that. So an unintentional collision of the heads, and Costa Zhu has a cut open up on the bridge of the nose. Johnny Lewis, his trainer and cut man, jumped right on it. Well, you hate to think of the irony that this fight also could play out where the scorecards would have to be, uh, be gone to before the 12 rounds is over. We hope that won't be the case. It looks like it's sort of on the eyebrow, bridge of the nose, but they're under control right now, but who knows? You know, Sharman Mitchell is making a choice, it strikes me, to fight on the inside a lot more than he has to in this big, giant ring uh, where you know he wants to use his uh, mobility. He's not doing it as much as I think they would like. 
a little bit surprising here at the outset that Shonda Mitchell doesn't use his uh, boxing skills, his movement, his side to side against the uh, the powerful Kostyzou. He just got rattled by a straight right hand, the signature punch of Kostyzou. It's the punch he used to take Zab Judah out, another lefty, and again he's got Mitchell in trouble on the ropes. Here in round two, Mitchell's down. Mitchell's disoriented, a long time to go, a minute 38 left in the second. Can Shonda Mitchell collect himself? He just landed a nice straight left hand, but he needs to be moving around this ring. We saw Mitchell's heart and determination in the first fight. We're going to have to see it here if this fight continues. Mitchell on wobbly legs. Costa Zoo coming out so fast after a 22-month layoff, not missing a beat. So it's Costa Zou looking extremely sharp, opening up with his signature right hand, another right, and then a series of punches that put Mitchell into the ropes here in the second. And you know, Charmin Mitchell's using his jab to, to keep himself out of trouble. Very smart. He's doubling and tripling that jab, and it's just offsetting Costa Zou's attack enough, Steve, so that he can't quite get to him. Very smart effort by Mitchell. And then Mitchell on the canvas for the third time in his career. It happened against Levander Johnson in 94 and Felix Flores in 2000. Under 10 seconds left in the second. And Mitchell with a left hook. Well, Costa Zou getting in a nice short hook as well, and I think wobbled Mitchell right at the end of that round. against left-handers, finds a way to get that straight right in. It's so compact and so good, and that one nailed Charmaine Mitchell. That's what started the trouble for Mitchell. And uh, it's a punch he used to get Zab Judah out, and it's been an effective punch here against Mitchell. There he put him in against the ropes, and, and followed up with the left hook, which he's been landing very effectively. So the left shoulder that was operated on, not effective. Now Mitchell did land a good straight left hand, but at the end of this round, there's the solid left hook from Costa Zou that hurt Mitchell. That's a really important punch, that left hook. And Mitchell with a welt forming over the right eye as we enter into round three. Mitchell with a lot more movement all of a sudden. After tasting the leather, another straight right hand upstairs by Costa Zou. Another one, and down he goes again. Testing the courage and chin. 
of Sean Bay Mitchell, who's been down two times in two rounds. Give Mitchell credit, too. Down so early in this round, and still, he's doing enough to hang in there. Again, Shami Mitchell on very unsteady legs. This has been such a sloppy effort so far for Mitchell. Not a disciplined, uh, skilled boxing match like he anticipated showing us. And of course, the complete antithesis by Sue, who sends Mitchell back with another hard right hand. And now digging to the body, Mitchell's ready to go again. Down for the third time in the fight. He's got 21 seconds to go here in round three. Now two times in this third round. So goes to work, and that's it. It's over. Here in the third round, and Costa Zou prevails in the rematch. Just like that. For Charmaine Mitchell, the supreme disappointment of his career. But a remarkable performance by Costa Zoo after a 22-month layoff. Normally not a quick starter to begin with. He comes in here and completely dominates uh, through two, two rounds plus. It's a, really an extraordinary effort by him at age 35. Unofficially 248 of round three. The veteran Costa Zoo. And you know, an interesting note, the press that voted on who they thought would win this fight, 44 picked Mitchell, 33 picked Zoo. So this was not, Mitchell was not an opponent that a lot of people didn't have confidence in coming into this fight. Well, a lot of good guys out there as possible future opponents for Costa Zoo. Ricky Hatton, of course, is a likely choice. Mayweather, Cotto, Vivian Harris. Vivian Harris is here with his trainer, Manu Stupa. Right now, these fans, and you see some of the Russian fans, basking in the moment for Costa Zou. Uh, many doubters coming into this fight, but he really took away all doubts with this performance. We look at this, the knockdowns in this round. Uh, two knockdowns. The right, straight right hand, which had knocked Mitchell down earlier in the fight. Zhu has a way of getting that in against lefties. It's not always possible with just a, a lead right, but Zhu has a way of doing it. Did it against Zab Judah, and has done it here tonight against Sharmbe Mitchell. Then, later in the round, he continued the onslaught. Again, the right hand was the primary weapon that sent Mitchell against the ropes. And then, very, very good work here. That was a tremendous left hook to the body. And the economy of punches there. Very accurate point, only what he needed to. And that was just too much for Charvet Mitchell and Costa Zou. Had really created some issues for him. And then finally, the coup de gras as he uses again the straight right hand, works very effectively. And Charvet Mitchell is down for the final time. And Costa Zou has this very rewarding victory after a long layoff, two injuries, and many people suggesting he might be at the end of the road. Not so. So three and a half years after winning the first fight, Costa Zou takes the rematch, retains his IBF 140-pound belt. Although many still view him as the undisputed champion, finally after two postponements due to injuries, the case is closed. He does it in convincing fashion over Shambay Mitchell. Zoo upping his record to 31 and 1. One no decision, 25 knockouts. Mitchell falls to 55 and 4. His first loss since February 2001, Mitchell, when he first met Zoo. Let's get it up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 2 minutes, 48 seconds in round number 3. The winner by way of knockout and still the IBF Junior Welterweight Champion of the World, Kostya!